to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Praise the Lord. So one of the benefits of working with the Holy Spirit is access to power. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power after, not before, not during, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he will make you witnesses unto me. The Holy Spirit also represents the voice of God. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. The Bible says, The Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, he says, and they shall give heed to um, the doctrine seducing spirit, he says, and the doctrine of demons. But the speaker is the Spirit and he speaks expressly. The word expressly there means that the Holy Spirit speaks in an unmistaken way. He speaks in a way that you know he's the one. So if there is haziness in your hearing God, the challenge is not the voice of the Spirit. The challenge is your level of spiritual alignment. Because the Spirit does not just speak, He speaks expressly. Are we together? Revelation chapter 2 and verse 29. The Holy Spirit represents the voice of God let him that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith so the spirit of God is a talking spirit he speaks he does not always speak um, the idea that God is always speaking yeah maybe there but he doesn't always speak because we're created in his image and his likeness and you are not always speaking the word of the Lord comes you read the Bible in the fifth day of the first month of this, the word of the Lord came. Just like faith, the word of the Lord comes. Praise the Lord. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit is very important. We explored it yesterday. And um, let me encourage us, develop a very healthy relationship with the Holy Spirit. I'll say one more thing and then we'll go to the third encounter relationship with the Holy Spirit is very atmosphere dependent. You will want to write this. Very atmosphere dependent. If there is one thing I have learned working with the Spirit of God is that relationship with the Holy Spirit is very atmosphere dependent. The first proof that you are interested in a relationship with the Holy Spirit is the sacrifice of creating the atmosphere that is conducive for fellowship. There is a way the Holy Spirit will relate with you that is different from the way he will relate with you corporately. He is very atmosphere dependent. Hallelujah. I said yesterday we have garages for our cars because we place value on the cars. Is that true? We have stores for our food. We have boxes for our jewelries but you must make room and make space for him. You can turn anywhere in your house as a place, as an altar for fellowship. You can turn your toilet and your bathroom. You can turn your living room. You just must be ready to invest that atmosphere. Number two, the second requirement for real intimacy with the Holy Spirit is the sacrifice of time. If you really want to know the Holy Spirit, you must be ready to sacrifice time. And your sacrifice of time will be based on the consciousness that no time spent with him is a waste. Your one hour with the Holy Spirit can save you 10 years of wasting your time. His time, time with him has monetary value. Time with him has time redemption value. Are we together? Remember Jesus was praying and relating with the Holy Spirit. When the disciples went to the other side they were six hours ahead of him already 
you would call that delay but the moment he was done praying he got up there was no boat he started walking on water within moments he had caught up with them and they were and the, the the boat was boisterous they were about to capsize when you stay with god you run the secret to running is staying it will look like you are being delayed but one leap with his backing will cover up decades are we together now number 3 the third encounter If you can help, just provide me a little time so that it will just guide me so we don't overshoot. The third encounter is the encounter with the Word of God. Encounter with the Word of God. Now, this is strange because you see, Jesus is also called the Word of God. But look up. There is the Word of God as the living logos, the personality, God himself. But there is the Word of God as the methodologies of the kingdom. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. So there is Jesus the way. There is Jesus the life. Are we together? If you know Jesus the life, you are, you are going to enjoy eternal life but you are not going to live a victorious life. For you to find your place of relevance in destiny, you must encounter Jesus the way, the methodology of the kingdom. Are we together now? So an encounter with the word of God. What is the word of God? A compendium of the mysteries, the secrets, and the principles of the kingdom. Please pay attention. So you have an encounter with Jesus, the son of God. You have the life of God as a reward. You have an encounter with the office and the person of the Holy Spirit. The reward, guidance, direction, fellowship, empowerment. Now you have an encounter with the logos, the word of God. The word of God as a compendium of his wisdom. The word of God as light that shines in darkness. The word of God as the mysteries of the kingdom. John 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, I apologize for just rushing. The prophet began to lament in chapter 4 and verse 6. He said, my people. He said, it's amazing. The first two words says, my people. Although they are my people, they are destroyed. Not because I rejected them. They are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. He says, because thou hast rejected knowledge, you will not be a priest. You do not sustain capacity to represent me because you have no knowledge. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible describing the Christ there, he says he upholds all things by the word of his power, being the brightness or, and the express image of God. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, 3. He upholds all things by the word of his power. So all things are upheld by the word. Ephesians 4 and verse 18 the, the uh, apostle Paul was teaching the church in Ephesus and he said in verse 18, having their understanding darkened, he says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. That means being born again is not enough. For you to maximize the potential that this life brings, you must have spiritual illumination. Are we together now? Psalm 82, when you read from verse 5 to 7, Psalm 82 from verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But the tragedy is in the next verse. It says, you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So it takes more than just being with Christ to reign on earth. I think this is where um, 
many believers, this is where the unbecoming of many Christians are. So they say, I love Jesus Christ. I love him with all my heart. Why are things happening like this? Because your victory is predicated not just on your relationship, but your access to the principles and the methodologies of the kingdom. Listen to me. The glory of God always comes to confirm that his principles have been kept. When the patterns of God are kept, the reward for walking in keeping with God's pattern is his glory. So when the glory of God shows up in your finances, in your life, it is proof that you have kept the patterns of God in that area. Are we blessed? Encounter with the word of God. The principles of the kingdom. Second Peter chapter 1, when you read from verse 2 even to 4. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of you see that now so the grace of God is not generic no there is a grace that appears to all men that is the grace unto salvation the grace of God that makes for salvation appears unto all men but there are certain graces that don't appear unto all men it is your knowledge that lifts you otherwise all our results will be the same the Bible says that the grace of God in this kingdom is predicated on your access to knowledge Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Again, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. Verse 4 says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises it says that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so this is very important knowledge is very important in this kingdom you've heard me say it again and again that dominion is not an impartation there is nowhere in scripture where dominion was imparted dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways and the methodologies of the kingdom are we blessed praise the lord i think you should you should be able to hear me can you hear me okay so we'll just continue Colossians chapter 3 and verse 6 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. But here's the part of the verse many people do not see. Colossians chapter... Praise the Lord. Thank you. Let's celebrate them. Thank you. Are we together? The wisdom of the word is not having access to it. It's knowing how to apply it for victory. So the Bible says the word of Christ should dwell in you in all wisdom. That means having access to the information is not where the wisdom is. Knowing how to bring out the scriptures and command victory in your life is where the wisdom is. Are we together? Praise the Lord. What is the benefit of an encounter with the word? Number one, understanding, spiritual understanding. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was admonishing the church in Colossae, and he said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, he's praying now, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with three things. Number one, the knowledge of his will. Number two, all wisdom. Number three, spiritual understanding. Praise the Lord. 
So we need understanding. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 42. Luke chapter 19 and verse 42. It says, Jesus was lamenting, and he says, If thou hast known, even thou at least in thy day, the things which belong unto your peace. That means the principles that allow your life to find peace. He says, but now they are hid from your eyes. And so he did a miracle for them in same chapter 24 of Luke. Luke 24 and verse 45. Luke chapter 24 and verse 45. Then opened he their understanding. Then opened he. That means access to scripture does not automatically bring understanding. God must open a man's understanding that they might understand scripture. When you read Isaiah 29, it's a scripture that blessed me from the day I found it. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. No matter how educated and how literate you are, when it comes to the matters of the Spirit, you will need the help of the Holy Spirit opening your understanding. Let's read this scripture together if you're a Christian and you can see it. Ready? One to read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is what? Stop. Not closed. Sealed. So the fact that you open it does not mean the seal is broken. You can open your Bible and yet it is still sealed. The Bible says, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray. And he said, I cannot. Why? For it is sealed. Next verse. He said, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I'm not even learned in the first place. So there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned will have to depend on the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to open scripture. You cannot approach scripture just scientifically. Yes, it is a book that is, is, has, this is literature, but there is an anointing and there is a grace that backs it. Are we together? Access to the word of God. An encounter with the word of God produces understanding. Number two, it produces faith. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. It says faith comes by hearing. Hearing your access to knowledge and information is the foundation of Bible faith. Very, very important. James chapter 1. Let's look at from verse 5 to 8. James chapter 1 very quickly. James chapter 1 from verse 5. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth unto men liberally and upbraided not, and it shall be given to him. Then he puts a disclaimer and a word of caution, verse 6. But let him ask in faith, the Bible says, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. 7. We are reading to verse 8. For let that man not think. Now, this is a very harsh statement. Let that man not think, not imagine in his heart that he shall receive anything from the Lord. All and any form of reception from the Lord will require faith. And it is your access to the word. You see that? So there is an explanation to not getting things from God. Apostle James already told us here that if you cannot receive by faith, you see the way the kingdom works is that when you believe, and then you receive. Then you have. Receiving is a spiritual thing. It's not physical. It is having that is physical. You see that? You have to first receive in the realm of the spirit by faith. And you don't just receive by saying, I receive. No. You receive by walking the principles that guarantee God's commitment on that matter. That's how to receive. Many believers make the mistake of saying, I receive just by verbalizing reception. That may be the first step. But the Bible way to receive is to find out the conditions allocated for the manifestation of that promise. And then obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with that condition. You have received that promise. You see that? So just mere confession, I receive, is going to flatter us and we'll keep wasting our time for nothing. If God says, for instance, um, 
that you will seek me and find me with all your heart and you desire intimacy with God. You don't just say, I receive intimacy. I receive means that you can obtain the grace and the staying power to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You have received. You don't receive by, please hear this, because God is correcting someone now. You may be saying, I receive, I receive, I receive, and wonder why things are not happening. You don't just receive by verbalizing reception. You receive by trusting the spirit of light to open your eyes to the conditions allocated for God's commitment on that matter. Are we blessed? Faith. Faith. What is faith? I define faith as the name given to the action you take based on your conviction about God and the integrity of his person. That is faith. The name given to the action, not the desire, not the believing. The believing is not faith. The believing is part of the faith equation until your action of obedience, not just any action, the action that is allocated to guarantee God's commitment. That's faith. What is the advantage, the third advantage of encounter with the word of God? Stability. Write it down, please. I've given you three benefits of an encounter with the word of God. Number one, spiritual understanding. And that's what your dominion depends on. Number two, faith. Number three, stability. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and, yes. Please keep it to us. 15 and 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, look up, please. Be ye what? Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Be steadfast. That means you must get to a point of stability in your Christian work where you are not just vacillating at anything. Why? Because you have been so infused with the word of God. Listen, you know you are growing spiritually when what made you shake and fear and fidget yesterday no longer has that power over you. Now, believers cannot be in the faith for a long time and you shake over everything. You must, even with natural age, there is an age you get to that. Even if they tell you there is an arm robber, you don't run again. Because you have gone through too many storms in life and they have created stability. You are no longer afraid. I remember a man who was sick many years ago and he was probably in his, I think, 70s, approaching 80s. And he had a kidney problem. And they said he needs a kidney transplant. And they were going to call a young man. And the man told them, he said, forget it, please. I've spent my days. There is no need robbing a young man of a fruitful life. He said, leave me alone. Just make the remaining days enjoyable and pleasurable. Let me spend time with my family. If that man had that kidney problem at 18 or 20, he would be afraid. But the passage of time created stability. There's no longer fear. This is how it is spiritually. You must grow to a point where you've gone through too many things you thought would kill you. But the awareness of God's mercy, God's grace, God's deliverance, quarter to shame, he came in too many times. So he does not expect you to be that afraid again. Do you know the higher you rise in the spirit, the stricter the standard of God's dealing with you. That was why Moses, two people can commit the same offense and God will act like he didn't see what one did and come to you and say, no, I've invested too much in you for this kind of fear. I've invested too much in your life for this kind of expectation. So it's risky to be deeper with God because the more he exposes you to his light and his glory, the more expectations he has from you. Are we together? That's why he told Moses, he said, no. Moses, you've seen too much of my glory to disobey me this far. You will not get to the promised land. I mean, what was there for him to just say, okay, Moses, I understand. You are human. These people are stubborn. Even me as God, I've not, I've been finding it hard with them. But he said, Moses, foreseeing this dimension of my glory, for 90 days you were with me, immersed in the glory. No, you've seen too much of my goodness to act this way. 
So the more you are exposed to the light of God, the more expectations he has. The word of God. Are we blessed? Isaiah 33 and verse 6 tells us wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Wisdom, knowledge brings stability. There is something about God when you know you will not be afraid again. There is something about Satan when you know you will also not be afraid. You see, the strength of darkness is magnifying its power using your ignorance. Are we together now? Yes. There are many nations, for instance, that when you study history, there are many nations that sometimes have had to get up and maybe uh, fight leaders and fight certain people or even fight cultural beliefs. Let me use cultural beliefs. There are certain people who maybe practice witchcraft or certain religions in some nations. And they told them, if you do this, this deity will kill you. And out of fear, they remain subjugated. One day, someone just made up his mind and said, you know what? Let me try this deity. And they found out that deity was not that powerful. And from that day, this is what light does to you. Satan, you know, there are rulers called rulers of darkness. Their dominion starts everywhere there is ignorance. When they find ignorance, their dominion is there. There is something you can know about the devil. For instance, Satan can be tired. Do you know that? Are you aware of that? That Satan can literally be tired of a man who he was tired of Job to a point that he went to God and said, what is it about this man? I've sojourned to and fro the earth. I've not been able to touch this man. And God said, the secret is that there is a hedge. So whatever that hedge is that was on Job can come upon you and you will give Satan the same experience in your lifetime. That he can come around you and your family members and find that mysterious hedge of protection. Now, I don't want to create any trouble this morning. This is a simple second service. But do you know that Satan is not the most wicked of demonic spirits? There are spirits that are more demonic. They are bound in everlasting chains right now as I speak to you. We are Bible students. Just, just to whet your appetite to say there are things. Satan does not just attack. Remember, his office in heaven was the custodian of the light of God. So Satan evaluates your extent of spiritual knowledge and develops a unique strategy based on your ignorance to attack you. He does not just attack at random. The same formula will not work for everybody. So when he comes and finds light in the area of finances, he won't touch you there. He will be patient enough to scan your life continue to scan your life and begin to write the areas of darkness and come up with a unique formula based on the areas of ignorance and the way he does it is to blind your mind the bible says in that area so that you will make the word of god in that area unfruitful so even if they are preaching in that area, that word does not profit you. He builds a stronghold. You know what a stronghold is? A stronghold is a mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim in that thinking pattern because your thought patterns are doorways for both the Holy Spirit and demons into your life. Are we together? So there are things when you know about Satan, he will not just come and buffet you with a lot of things. No, no. When he came to Eve and Adam and spoke to them, there were certain things they did not know. When he came to Jesus, he said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. But there was something Jesus knew. It is written. Not it is said. Not I think. It is written and satan said ah so you know this next temptation it is written third temptation it is written and he left him for a season the next time he will come back he didn't come to jesus directly he came through peter he used peter's compassion 
And Jesus looked and said, no, Peter, this is not you. Get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter said, what did I do? He said, you don't even know what is going on in the realm of the spirit. Satan has desired to use your compassion to stop me from going to the cross. I have prayed for you. When you are converted, study your brethren. He will come in that way too. Satan can use good attributes in your life, not just demonic attributes. It is not only lust and pride that kills. Satan can use love to kill. Was it not the compassion of the people that Abraham went with? I'm sure they would have stopped him and said, no, don't kill Isaac. It is not only evil Satan uses to destroy. The tree was called the tree of both knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil. He can still use good to kill. Satan does not have to use a lie alone. He can use the truth too and kill. That's why the, whole, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Just accessing truth at random can destroy you. You must be guided into it. An encounter with the word of God. My prayer is that God will deliver our generation from ignorance. There is a lot of pride and boastful speaking shrouded in, in a deep level of spiritual ignorance. Many things we do not know about God, about Satan, about life, about destiny. And our lives and our destinies, I tell you, are at the mercy of this. Do you know even scientifically, there were many things that were thought to be impossible, but science today is demystifying them. They were not mysteries. They were only mysteries based on our ignorance. You see, challenges, you've heard me say, they are not generic. They depend on the level of light that you have access to. Two people can be in a situation. One will walk at it as if Satan does not exist, and the other one will be trapped by it. What you know matters in this kingdom. So Paul said, Ephesians 1, when you begin to read from verse 15 down to 20, he had to bow his knees, praying for the church in Ephesus, that the spirit of wisdom and knowledge be given to them, that the heart of your understanding being flooded with light, he says that you may know. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints. How are the saints matured? Not just by just doing regular activities. The saints are matured on the strength of their access to light. Guided light. There is something you can know about restoration. Oh, God says, I will restore. I agree. But do you know how to make it work in your life? You can quote that scripture and create a theology out of your disappointment that God does not restore. But there is a key that activates it. Do you know that God can save people from shame? He says, I will call upon the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. He says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. By this formula, what formula? Calling upon the Lord and then praising together. So there is a mystery when you mix prayer and praise. It's like ingredients that form something in the spirit. Paul and Silas, when they were in the jail, they prayed and they praise, and that same thing happens. So, so every time your enemies attack you, what is the formula? It is not prayer alone. When you are done with prayer, you switch to praise. He said, by that formula, I am delivered from my enemies. I pray every day and I say, open my eyes, oh God, to understand your ways. Show me your ways. Show me your ways. He said, that will show us the path of light. In your light, we see light. Are we blessed? The principles of the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 13, let's wrap up for this service. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Jesus was teaching an extension of what we know to be the Beatitudes. And he gets to this point and he said, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. 
A mystery is a hidden code of operation that is privy to a group of people. The military people have their code of operation. They have the way that they speak. If you are not a military man, you may not understand. But they have their signs of communication. Is that true? Market people have their signs of communication. In the kingdom, we also have our ways of working. For instance, when you see somebody going down and you tell the person in the name of Jesus you are rising up, it looks like you are lying. But it is, a, it is a way of operating in the kingdom that when men say there is a casting down, for you it's that there is a lifting up. You don't say it when you see it. You say it to see it. An encounter with the word of God. So we have an encounter with the son of the living God, Jesus the Christ. Are you seeing now? Number two, we have an encounter with the office and the person, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Notice that they have their different rewards. And it's very strange that none of them will replace the other. They all complement. You have eternal life, I agree. But spiritual ignorance can kill you. Lack of guidance and direction will make you go around Jericho indefinitely. When they stood there at Jericho, they didn't guess their formula. They would have died for nothing. The captain of the host of heaven had to come and give them the formula and say, go round Jericho seven times. The seventh time, lift your shofar and sound it. The victory that we desire in our spiritual life depend on these encounters. Depend on these encounters. The encounter with the Son of God, your entrance into the kingdom, access to righteousness, the life of God, access to the spiritual blessings that reside in the heavenlies. Your encounter with the Holy Spirit provides you guidance, provides you direction, provides you access to the voice of God, access to the speakings of God, provides you access to true spiritual power, power that provides results. Remember, it is divine power, it is divine power that activates all things. Then access to the word of God, the logos of God, not as a person, but as the methodologies of the kingdom, knowing the ways of God. This is about the greatest area of ignorance in the church. Church. Most people have received Jesus Christ. In fact, most people have spent time fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. They even hear God, but the imbalance in their hearing is because they have not encountered the word of God. So there is a mix to what they are hearing. Today they are correct. Tomorrow they are wrong because the word of God is the jurisdiction of balance. The word of God purifies your hearing the voice of God. I can hear God and you see, let me wrap up by saying this. One minute and then we'll pray. The way things happen in the realm of the spirit and the speakings of God prophetically is such that you must encounter the word of God for the speakings of God to profit you. Are we together? Because the way God speaks, he speaks in similitudes. He speaks through signs. He speaks through tokens. There are so many variations on how God speaks. But all his speakings submit to the word of God. So you can sieve and purify the word of God regardless the symbols. I can see a ring in the realm of the spirit. And that ring can mean that God is bringing you to a greater level of authority. Like it happened to the prodigal son. Is that true? I can see a ring in the spirit. And for someone else, that ring means destroy oppression. It can mean you are going through a cycle of pain. Are you seeing that now? Just generically interpreting that every time you see a ring, it means this is error. You need the authority of the word of God to interpret the speakings in the spirit. Otherwise, you will use the same mouth to bless another and mislead another. And you are sincere. This is the unbecoming of the prophetic ministry. Because of the charismatism around the prophetic ministry and the attractiveness, usually when you encounter the Spirit of God like that, I hope you know it's not only the Holy Spirit that speaks. Every spirit has the capacity to speak. Your human spirit, demonic spirits, the Holy Spirit, angels are spirits. They all speak. There is no spirit in the Bible whose mouth was silent. They all spoke. Even blood, when it gains its spiritual status, it speaks. Is that not true? It's in your Bible. Blood has its own spirit and it speaks. 
Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. It is the word of God that gives balance and jurisdiction. So I can, for instance, look at this, my dear friend, and in a vision, I may look at him and see chains all around him. Are you seeing now? I can look at his wife and see chains all around her. Now it is left, my spiritual understanding is what will give credence and intelligence to my interpreting that vision. If I do not know the word of God and the character of how demons operate and their jurisdiction and the way God operates, my interpretation will be corrupted by my lack of spiritual intelligence. It is not my perception that was wrong. I saw correctly, but because I am barren of the knowledge of the ways of God, I will give credit to even things Satan is not allowed to do based on the jurisdiction of the word of God. So for instance, I can look at the wife now and I'm looking at him and looking at his wife and I'm seeing that there is, suddenly she has a horn in the realm of the spirit. If I do not know the word of God, I will say, Mr. Man, you have been sitting in the same house with a witch. She is not a witch. That vision is seeking for spiritual intelligence to filter the explanation. She may be the nicest, kindest woman, but she may be connected to an ordinance that needs to be free, that has nothing to do with her. Now it is your spiritual intelligence that interprets that vision in a way that... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye